we have two solutions we're going to use in this experiment, 0.25 molar calcium chloride and 0.25 molar sodium carbonate. We're going to start by pouring out each of the solutions into a small beaker. This is going to make it easier to measure in the graduated cylinder. You can see each of these solutions are clear, and this is to be expected as both calcium chloride and sodium carbonate are soluble according to our solubility rules. Next, we are going to measure out approximately 10 mils of the calcium chloride. We are going to do this by pouring about 9 mils of the solution into the graduated cylinder, roughly, and then using the dropper to measure the remaining one mil accurately. It's important that we measure as close to 10 mils as possible as we want to calculate a theoretical yield out of this. You can see here, I am looking at the meniscus at eye level. And remember when we are measuring liquids in a graduated cylinder, we measure them by the bottom of the meniscus. You can see here we now have 10 mils of our calcium chloride. The camera doesn't do it justice. I have the camera looking up at this, so it looks a little off, but in person this was 10 mils on the dot. We're now going to do the same thing with the sodium carbonate, except we are going to measure 15 mils of the sodium carbonate. So again, we'll do the very similar. We're going to measure up to about 14 mils by pouring in with the beaker and then using the dropper to measure the last mil. So now we have both of our reactants ready the 10 mils of the calcium chloride and the 15 mils of the sodium carbonate. So now that those two are measured out, we're gonna go take care of the filter paper. So unfortunately I didn't record weighing it, but you should see in about two seconds, the weight for the filter paper come up on screen. This was the dry weight. We're gonna need this later to calculate how much product we have. So now I'm gonna fold the filter paper so we can use it in the funnel. So the first step of that is just to fold it in half, like so. And then we're going to fold it in half again, and we're going to get a funnel-shaped piece of filter paper. Now you're going to see there's going to be four layers of this filter paper, and it's kind of tough to see on camera, but I'm going to try my best to show you guys. So what we want to do is grab the third piece of paper in this. And by doing that, we're going to stretch it open. And this is going to create our filter for the filter paper. It's tough to see, but this is closed on the inside. So it will hold our solid and it will allow our liquid to go through. Now I'm just going to wet down the filter paper. And this is just so it can stick to the funnel. Basically, it just helps it sit better. And this is important too, because we don't want there to be much of a gap on the outside of the filter paper, because that would allow our solution to go to the outside and not filter through. So now that the filter paper is draining, we're going to do the reaction. First, I'm going to add the 15 mils of the sodium carbonate. And you guys can see again that this is a clear solution. There's no precipitate in there. And then we're going to add the 10 mils of the calcium chloride.
and you guys can see almost immediately we have a reaction, which you guys can see now below. So as a reminder, the calcium chloride reacted with the sodium carbonate. We formed calcium carbonate, which is a solid according to our solubility rules, and sodium chloride, which is aqueous according to our solubility rules. So we're going to sit here, and it's going to be about five minutes of stirring, or because of editing, real quick for you guys. And we're going to pour it off onto our filter paper. It's very important here that we do not pour over the filter paper or towards the top because again, we would be dealing with our solution going around the filter paper. So leaving about a centimeter at the top, we're gonna let it drain. And as you guys can see here, the filtrate that's coming through is clear, which means our precipitate is staying behind. If that wasn't the case and the precipitate was coming through the filter paper, we would simply just take the filtrate and refilter it again until the filtrate would appear clear and we could ensure that all the precipitate was retained. So we're just going to keep filtering off the calcium carbonate and I'm going to fast forward through a lot of this because a lot of it's standing around to wait. You guys can see here, I take a little bit of distilled water, and this is just to get any of the remaining calcium carbonate that's stuck to the edge of the beaker back into the filter paper. That way we can recover our product there. Here, I'm just getting a piece of paper towel that I'm gonna put my name on. This is what you guys would do if we were actually in lab you would put your name and section number on the paper towel, and this is what we're gonna to use to dry the calcium carbonate. To get a better shot here, I switched to my phone, so I apologize to those who are gonna get annoyed by the shift and aspect ratio with the black bars, but we'll get a better view of what's going on. So you guys can see the calcium carbonate is being retained, and the filtrate is remaining clear. So now that that's done filtering, we are gonna remove the filter paper. I'm gonna take the plastic stir bar and just gently raise the edge of the filter paper off the funnel. And being very careful, we're gonna pull out the filter paper and recover our product. So the reason we have to dry this over a week is twofold. First of all, we did the reaction in water, so there's gonna be some water present there, but also calcium carbonate can form hydrates, which you guys can now see above. Calcium carbonate tends to form these hydrates, which just means we're gonna have water that's incorporated with the molecule in the crystal. Thankfully, with this type of hydrate, if we let it sit out a week, the water will naturally evaporate off and we'll be left with anhydrous calcium carbonate, which is what we want to measure. All I'm doing here is very carefully opening the filter paper, making sure that I don't lose any product, and you just kind of very gently open it. And you guys can see the calcium carbonate is gonna be on the inside of that filter paper. So once we make sure that our product is spread out fairly evenly so it can dry, we're gonna transfer it into a cabinet so it can dry for a week. This is what you guys would do in lab. Again, apologize for the shift in aspect ratio. I didn't show me coming back to lab to get the final mass, but you guys can see on screen, this is what the final mass was after drying. So if we take this and subtract it from the initial filter paper mass, that will give us our mass of calcium carbonate. 